All right, YouTubers, welcome back to our discussion of the conservation of momentum. And we're almost at the point now where we can try to put everything together and come up with a, a governing differential equation that expresses the conservation of linear momentum as applied to a, a differentially small size fluid element. And so remember that what we're trying to do is basically apply Newton's second law of motion uh, to this fluid element. And so this expresses that the time rate of change of momentum in, in this control volume is equal to the net uh, flow of momentum through the control volume, inflow minus outflow, plus the sum of the forces acting on the control volume. And we know what these terms are now because in the previous videos we've been working to, uh, to obtain them. Uh, so let's take a look at what this, this balance would look like uh, for the X component. So in terms of the time rate of change of momentum in the control volume, so remember uh, we have rho uh, du dt, uh, partial derivative of the, u, the x component velocity u with respect to t times the volume of the element delta x delta y delta z. And then the flow terms, uh, inflow minus outflow. So we showed in the last video that that can be expressed as follows minus rho times u partial of u with respect to x plus v partial of u with respect to y plus w partial of u with respect to z where again u, v, and w are the x, y, and z components of the velocity vector and then plus the sum of the forces on the control volume of the gravity force rho gx times the volume and this last term here represents the shearing forces that are acting on the control volume in terms of expressed in terms of the shear stresses. So again just to be clear what all these terms are so this first term uh, here on the left hand side represents the accumulation or the net rate of change of momentum in the control volume. The first term on the right hand side uh, represents the momentum uh, through going passing through the control volume by flow. And the next two terms represent the forces. So here the second term on the right hand side represents the gravitational force which is a body force. And the last term represents the shear forces that are acting on the fluid element. So notice a couple of things here. First, all these terms are multiplied by the volume of this element and we considered a cube with the sides delta x, delta y, delta z. So all those terms cancel out in these uh, quantities. Okay, now we can go through and write what we have left. So this is again the x component and here I'm moving the, uh, the flow terms over to the left hand side of the equation. So I have the accumulation term plus the flow terms. So this leaves me with rho multiplied by this quantity partial of u with respect to t plus u partial of u with respect to x plus v partial of u with respect to y plus w partial of u with respect to z equals rho g sub x plus the partial of tau xx with respect to x plus the partial of tau yx with respect to y plus the partial of tau zx with respect to z. And of course, similarly, uh, I get corresponding uh, equations for the y and z components that are shown here. So rho for the y component, par rho partial of v with respect to time, plus u partial of v with respect to x, plus v partial of v with respect to y, plus w partial of v with respect to z, equals rho g sub y, plus the partial of tau xy with respect to x, plus the partial of tau yy with respect to y, plus the partial of tau zy with respect to z. And, and similarly also for the, for the z component. So this system of equations, so these are the x, y, and z components of this momentum balance and they give me a system of partial differential equations and this system of, of uh, equations is known as the Cauchy momentum equations. So these express basically Newton's second law uh, applied to a fluid element. The net uh, rate of change in momentum is equal to the momentum carried into and out of the control volume by flow plus the sum of the forces. So all we've done is apply Newton's second law uh, to, to a fluid element. Okay, now we still have these expressions for these stresses. So even though this is a, this is a correct description of the momentum balance, it's not particularly useful for us in the present form. Uh, because what do we what do we plug in for these shear stresses? How do we evaluate those? Ideally, what we'd like to have would be some relationship between the shear stress and the velocity field. 
because we've already expressed all these flow terms in terms of the velocity field. So if we could get an expression relating stress and deformation, then that would simplify these equations. And so it would have uh, a system of equations in terms of only the, the velocity field. And so we, we already know how to do that. One example of a, a way that we already talked about to relate stress and deformation of a, of a fluid is Newton's law of viscosity, which relates the shear stress, tau yx, for example, to um, the rate of deformation times some constant uh, viscosity coefficient, which we're calling mu since we're considering a, a Newtonian fluid. If this coefficient is constant, if it doesn't depend on the rate of deformation, then, then we can write it as mu. And so remember that this is an expression for this type of deformation uh, associated with this flow, uh, where we have you know a flow between a, a two plates and, and a gap uh, of width h and the top plate is moving with a velocity v. So we use this as a way to illustrate uh, this, uh, this relationship. And, and these are called constitutive relationships, uh, relationships that allow us to connect the stress and the rate of deformation in the material. So you can imagine that if we can use this kind of relationship, then every time, every place we see a stress, a shear or a normal stress, we can replace it with its corresponding uh, uh, deformation component and then have a system of equations that involves only, only the velocity field. And so we can do that. And the details about how those relationships are established uh, can get complicated uh, depending on the nature of the relationship between stress and deformation, particularly if you're uh, not making the assumption that, uh, the, the, that the viscosity coefficient is, uh, is a constant. But for our cases, uh, for, for this class, since we're sort of just getting started, we'll, we'll assume that the fluid is Newtonian. Uh, in other words, the, the viscosity coefficient is constant. It doesn't depend on deformation. And it's isotropic, so the properties are the same in all directions. And so for this case, we can show that we get these relationships for the, uh, all the nine components uh, of the stress tensor. So on the, on the left-hand side here, uh, we have the, the normal components, normal stress components, tau xx, tau yy, and tau zz. And on the right-hand side, uh, we have the shear stress components, uh, tau xy, tau xz, and tau yz. And it turns out for this kind of, uh, uh, for these assumptions, uh, that uh, these, these two uh, components are, are the same in the stress tensor. Okay, so this gives us a relationship between the stress and the velocity gradients. But notice that for the normal stress components, there's some, uh, there's, an, there's an extra term here that, that looks kind of weird. And so this, uh, this term appears because there's a, a little bit of a, a detail that has to be considered. Because normally, uh, you know, when, when we're thinking about mechanics, uh, fluid mechanics, uh, you know, mechanical you know, machines, things like that, uh, we think about pressure in terms of a, a mechanical pressure, a force. Uh, but pressure also exists, uh, you know, in terms of a, a thermodynamic kind of picture also, you know, relate where it's determined by an equation of state, you know, like PV equals NRT. And so this idea of mechanical pressure, like a force, and thermodynamic pressure described in terms of an equation of state, this bulk viscosity term is needed to connect those two concepts of pressure uh, together. And so not only do we have the, the coefficient of viscosity, Newtonian uh, coefficient of viscosity, but also some extra term uh, associated with that, and then also the, uh, this del dot v, this gradient term. Uh, and, and so this is a detail that, uh, that that comes into play, you know, to connect these, these two ideas about the pressure. But notice that uh, for, our, uh, for our case, or the cases that we, that we may be of interest uh, in, in this course, at least initially, we're going to talk about many times incompressible flows. For example, we're concerned about flows of liquids, uh, you know, often in chemical engineering. And so remember, for incompressible flows, uh, by conservation of mass, del dot V is zero. So we can actually eliminate these terms. We don't need to consider this, uh, this bulk viscosity term uh, for many of the flows of interest to us. Uh, you know, if, if, we, if we don't assume incompressible, then we need to, to, to incorporate this term for the normal stresses and get uh, 
a, a value for the bulk viscosity of the material. But for at least for now, we're gonna we're gonna neglect these terms uh, and simplify this uh, uh, for our uh, just to get a first picture of what's going on. Okay, so now that we have the constitutive relationship that connects the stresses, the shear normal stresses, to deformations or rates of deformation, we can then substitute those into the Cauchy momentum equations and obtain a new set of partial differential equations that instead of involving shear stress terms, involves uh, gradients in the velocity field. And so, for example, uh, these are the x, y, and z components of the Cauchy momentum equations making these substitutions that I showed on the previous slide. So for example, the x component, you have rho uh, du dt, where there's a big D, and I'll talk about that in a minute, equals rho g sub x, the gravitational term minus partial derivative of p with respect to x, so it's the pressure term, plus mu, the viscosity coefficient, times the second derivative of u with respect to x, plus the second derivative of u with respect to y, plus the second partial derivative of u with respect to z. And similarly for the, the y and z components. And so this uh, simplification of the Cauchy momentum equations for the case of a Newtonian incompressible fluid is called the Navier-Stokes equation. So this is very important uh, for fluid mechanics because this, this system of equations allows us to determine the velocity field you know, u, v, and w, the x, y, and z velocity components of the fluid at any point in space uh, in any kind of flow, as long as we can solve them. And that, that becomes a, a problem, actually, because this is a system of nonlinear partial differential equations. Uh, so it's not trivial uh, to, to be able to solve these. And actually, there's not that many cases uh, that can be solved by hand. Uh, but computationally, these can be used to solve. At least we know what the equations are, even if we're not able to solve them by hand for every case. But as long as we know the characteristics of the flow, uh, an appropriate boundary and initial conditions, we can, in principle, solve the system of equations and obtain the velocity field in three-dimensional space as a function of time. So this is very important, uh, very important uh, system of equations that we're going to use uh, throughout the course. Okay, so again, just to you know, reemphasize what all these terms mean. So the, the net change in momentum, uh, the accumulation term and the flow terms are kind of lumped into, into, this, uh, into this, these terms on the, on the left-hand side. So this represents the momentum change. And the gravitational force is this first term on the right-hand side. Pressure forces are represented by the middle term and viscous forces, or the shear stress forces, are represented by the, the third term on the right-hand side. So again, this is Newton's second law of motion. The time rate of change in momentum is equal to the sum of the forces on the control volume. Okay, so just one, one final point. Uh, notice I, I wrote this derivative a little bit different here on the, on the left-hand side. I did big capital D uh, of U with respect to T. So what does that mean? So this operator, when I write capital D with respect to T, it incorporates both this partial derivative with respect to time and the terms that we had associated with the momentum flow. So uh, the x component of velocity u times the partial with respect to x plus the y, com y component of velocity v times the partial with respect to y plus the w, uh, the z component of velocity w with respect to z uh, times the, the velocity, the plus the z component of velocity w with respect to z. And so this term uh, is often called the, the substantial derivative. Uh, and this, this represents the rate of change uh, following the motion of a fluid element. So if you were traveling along uh, in a flow uh, with some particular uh, chunk or piece or, or element of fluid, uh, this would express uh, the rate of change of some quantity uh, as you travel along that path. But for us, it's, it's, uh, it's, we're using this as kind of a shorthand notation uh, for, for this, uh, to write these equations. Uh, but, you know, maybe in, in, a little, in a later video, I may have a chance to, to explain this a little bit further. But for now, it's just uh, basically a shorthand way to, to write these equations.